Hello YouTube! I just finished processing 200 lithium cells using this mega cell charger. Stick around if you'd like to hear my thoughts on it. These are 18650 lithium cells. These are from Battery Hookup. They're out of modem packs. They have a little bit of glue on them, but not much. These are new old stock, meaning they've never been cycled, but they sat around for a couple of years. They tested great, and I'm really happy with the cells. I didn't have any heaters or any dead ones. They all came out above 2.7 volts out of the packs. Most were around 3.2 uh, or 3.3 volts straight out of the pack. So I was really happy with these. I'm going to be doing a little project with those in the future. Now for this mega cell charger, which is 16 bays, it's supposed to do capacity testing. Uh, I ordered it on January 2nd. It was $164. That was with shipping. Now, at the time that I ordered it, the website said that all the orders would be shipped by end of January. So I waited till February. And then I hadn't received the Megacell charger, and I hadn't received any emails whatsoever from the company. So I emailed Alex. Alex got back to me right away. He apologized and said they couldn't get him out. So he offered to send me one that he had in the shop, which I agreed to. It arrived on February 25th. This is all you get. Now it was wrapped up in packaging material, but this is it. So I took this out of the box, and the first thing I asked was, well, how do I plug it in? <laughs> I didn't know that you needed a power supply. They've updated the website, and the website does a better job currently of telling you that, but at the time, I didn't know that. So I jumped on Amazon, ordered a 5-volt power supply. The other thing is I didn't have any instructions. So I was going on their website, and the website kept redirecting me to the sales page. There was no menu across the top of the screen. There's nothing that allowed me to find an instruction book. So I emailed Alex so I could download the software from their website, but I couldn't actually open the software. So I emailed them for a license key on the same day. I received the license key the next day. Then I was able to finally open the software. I didn't know how to get this to communicate to the Wi-Fi. Now eventually I got it figured out but I had to have different menus open on the computer screen. So I had the manual open, I had Alex's video uh, instructions, then I had another YouTuber, Lithium Solar, check out his channel if you haven't seen it. But Lithium Solar had a really, really well done video on how to set this up. And then I also had to have Google open because they were using words such as flash, I didn't know what that meant, that meant. So I was constantly Googling the definitions of these different words that all these guys were using to try to understand how to get this thing. You know, I had to update, um, they call it firmware. It's a software that's built into this thing, but I had to update that when I first got it. So I had to connect this USB to this, but it doesn't, it doesn't hook up automatically, so I had to go into computer settings on the computer, um, and I had to tell it to communicate through a certain USB port. And all that took me several hours of Googling and trying to figure out what all that meant. I'm Again, I, I'm not a computer programmer, so I'm sure this is, uh, you guys are probably laughing at me here, but... You know, I just didn't know it. Uh, but it didn't seem like the colors on the software were consistent. They, they seemed to kind of bounce around. I seem to be getting an update on the computer screen about every 9.4 seconds on average. I tried taking this out to the garage because that's where I wanted to do battery stuff. I don't want the battery stuff in the house. Well, it turns out that once this lost internet, because I only have a, a single um, wireless router 
in the house. I, I don't have internet in the garage, so I couldn't use this in the garage. I, I needed this constantly connected. And then, you know, if like my daughter ran up and closed the laptop screen on me, then um, the cycle that I was in the middle of it, I, I couldn't register anymore and I'd have to restart it. And slot two and slot nine, they were doing this very odd thing compared to all the other slots. And all the cells on the little screen here would always show a slightly higher voltage than actual. And that's fine because the software was set up, the, just the factory settings on it, I, I didn't adjust the settings, uh, where at 4.2 volts, it immediately stopped, then it would wait five minutes and then it would start discharging, which is fine. Um, and that would, so this would always register a slightly higher voltage than the screen on my multimeter. And that was across the board, every slot. The only exceptions were slot two and slot nine. And what would happen is these would always register slightly higher until they hit 4.2 volts on here. Then at 4.2 volts on here, and this would be like 4.195, this stayed at 4.2 volts. It didn't stop charging the cells. Just like all the other cells, all the other slots, they would stop charging the cell. But slot two and slot nine, the screen would just hold there for a couple of hours and continue to dump amps into the cells and their voltage would continue to rise on this screen but not register on this one. This one kept saying 4.2 and this one would go up past 4.2, uh, sometimes as high as 4.22 volts on the screen. Uh, eventually, it started discharging. And then the opposite thing happened. This stayed at 4.2 for a while during discharging until it finally got below 4.2 on this screen. Uh, and then it would finally end at three volts across the board. The trouble with that is that these two slots always had really high uh, cell capacity numbers. So I wrote the capacity numbers on all these cells. These ones I actually went and tested a double time in different slots. These came out of slot two or slot nine. The numbers with the stars on them were my second round where I put them in any other slot other than slot two or nine. And you can see the second round of testing is lower than the first round. These are all supposed to be 2200 milliamp hour cells and um, they would register above 2300 in slot two or slot nine, whereas all the other slots would just always come out less than that. You know, some some slightly higher, there's 2209, 2217, uh, but not this 2300 stuff. Uh, on average of this batch that I retested in different slots, we were 117 milliamp hours higher in slot two or nine compared to all the other slots. Uh, so, the tough part is that I, I can't trust then the numbers that come out of two or nine. And again, maybe you guys who are programmers, you probably know exactly what to do and how to fix that, but I'm not that guy. So I'm actually giving this away to Lithium Solar, who gave me a ton of his time helping answer the questions. If it wasn't for Lithium Solar being able to answer the questions, I never would have gotten this to even turn on in the first place. So thank you to Lithium Solar. I will leave a link to his channel in the description below. Uh, I'm not doing a lot of stuff with 18650, so I'm just gonna give him this charger. Uh, if I want to do anything else with 18650s, I'm just gonna buy those little four slot $30 chargers. All right, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. I'll leave an affiliate link for these batteries in the description below from Battery Hookup. If you want to buy them, you can use my discount code, which is David Paz. All right, thanks.